How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and today we're going to be talking about five car mods that I do not recommend you guys do first. A lot of people are eager to start modifying their car the moment that they get their car and some of these mods are just not good options. They are not good choices as your first car mod or even just like early on. These are mods that I would wait to do and you'll see why. I'll explain everything. A few of them might upset you guys but You'll see, my logic will make sense, I promise. At least I hope it does. Anyways, for mod number one, I'm going to have to give that to carbon fiber parts. I have seen a lot of cars out there with carbon fiber front ends, carbon fiber hoods, carbon fiber fenders, carbon fiber trunks, all of this stuff. The first thing they do when they get their, their brand new car is they swap out the super heavy and cheap aluminum or, or polymer for carbon fiber and and to me that just never made sense and my reasoning for that is i just think the price outweighs the benefit carbon fiber looks cool i like how carbon fiber looks i think sometimes it's a little bit too overdone on some cars but i really like my carbon fiber i have tasteful carbon fiber on the supra to where yeah like i have a little bit of carbon fiber on the sides i have a carbon fiber hood but you wouldn't really be able to tell just because it's just barely peeking through but imagine if i picked up this car bone stock and the first thing i did was carbon fiber fenders carbon fiber hood carbon fiber everything it definitely would look cool and it definitely would stand out but i would still have 200 horsepower and to me that it's just it doesn't make sense you're wasting thousands of dollars on carbon fiber and it doesn't do shit except look cool so just in my own opinion, the money you spent, and it's not like carbon fiber is cheap, so you spent a good chunk of change on that carbon fiber. The money you spent could have been spent better elsewhere, actually enhancing your car. I love how carbon fiber looks. I don't want people to think that I don't like it, but you could have spent that money elsewhere. Now you might be thinking, well, cool. You know what? I had $3,000 in my bank account. Instead of buying all that carbon fiber, I'll buy a turbo kit or a supercharger kit or something. A, that's not enough money for that, but let's just say it was. B, another horrible idea do not buy a supercharger or a turbocharger right out of the gate that just that is one of the dumbest things i think a lot of people do and i'll explain i love going fast and i think a turbocharger and a supercharger is one of the best things you could do to your car but as a first mod very dumb decision you want to know why let's take this mustang for instance so obviously this mustang is built around the horsepower that it actually makes but imagine if it was bone stock. We would have tiny little brakes up front. We would have tiny little tires in the back. We would have a weak transmission. We would have a shitty fuel system. The list goes on. The biggest issue with a turbocharger or supercharger kit is there's a lot of supporting mods that need to go into it. You can't just buy a turbocharger or supercharger and call it a day. You need a strong foundation, whether it be stronger axle, stronger transmission, stronger motor. You need more fuel with that. Now the kit might come with it, but it's usually kind of like the, the, the minimum of what you need. You also need a way like giant slicks to get the power to the ground and you need a way to stop as well. So although I do love turbochargers and superchargers, would not recommend it as a first mod. I think it's a reckless way to build your car and a reckless way to spend your money. All right, this next one's just a given. I guess we'll just go through this one really quickly. Ricer mods, don't buy them. It's a dumb idea. Don't buy the shit at AutoZone you see. If you're there getting your oil, you should not leave with a fake hood scoop. Just don't do it, very dumb idea. Anything at AutoZone that is a performance part, probably not a performance part. Just just, just don't, just no matter how cool you think it looks, it definitely does not look cool. So just, just don't. All right, this next one, I wouldn't even dare really call it a mod. I think this is more of just devaluing your vehicle. Chopping your mufflers off, don't do it. Just, just don't do it please don't do it. I'm tired. Everyone else is tired. Our ears need a break. We're tired of hearing these dog shit sounding cars. Just, just stop it. I can't even sleep at night. My room's all the way in the back of the house and I'll still hear people with chopped mufflers off their Mustangs or their Hondas just fucking going by and it just, it just sounds so bad. Just don't do it. A- the only advantage you're really gaining is a little bit less weight. You're, you're not really freeing up your exhaust and letting it flow better because your computer doesn't know that you freed up your exhaust to let it flow better. It thinks something's wrong, so you're losing back pressure there. B, it nine times out of 10 doesn't even sound good, so just don't do it. If you want an exhaust and you wanna be loud, get a legit exhaust that is loud. It'll it'll sound better. I'm not all for super loud exhausts anyway. I like, you know, loud cars. You know, my McLaren's loud, my Mustang's loud, but they're tastefully loud. They're not, you know, obnoxiously loud. Some people, especially TikTokers, they love just their car being the loudest. Like, oh, I got the loudest Mustang ever. It's so fucking what? It, like, I, I, anyone could do that. I could go chop the mufflers off this piece of shit and it would be stupid loud, but I'm not going to do that because I'm not stupid. So yeah, 
don't do that. Don't don't go pick up your new Civic and do that. Don't go pick up your new Mustang and do that. It doesn't sound good. And all right, next one. We're going to do an honorable mention right here. And that is a wrap. I wouldn't really consider a wrap a mod. That's why it's kind of under honorable mention. But it definitely needs to be mentioned. Because people buy brand new BMWs, brand new Infinities, br brand new Mustangs. And the first thing they do is change the color. There's nothing adherently wrong with that. You could do whatever you want. But seeing a stock car wrapped a bright, obnoxious color kind of is goofy. We could still see the stock wheels. We could still see the stock tires. Like, this, th the first thing you did was change your color. You dressed it up like a little Barbie doll. That's the first thing you did? To me, that one just never made much sense. Um, I think a wrap should be one of the final touches, you know? It's a good way to tie everything together. So that's something I would do last. It's like what I did on my McLaren. I modded it first, and then I got this wrap. And I want to rewrap it already. You see? You outgrow colors too. Also, another honorable mention I just need to mention because I saw a TikTok recently of some dude swearing that this is the best first car mod. Slicks and a drag pack. Not a good first car mod. I don't know why you would think that. Your 400 horsepower car, your 300 wheel horsepower car doesn't need slicks and a drag pack. Oh, well, I need to put the, the power to the ground. It's the best way to do it. And you save weight. You save a little weight. I will give you that. That's like the only benefit, but a normal, decent performance tire and a nice set of wheels would benefit much more. And I know that will go against the next mod on this list, but you should not put a drag pack on a stock scat pack on a stock SS on a stock 5.0. You don't need all that. You just wanted, you're just telling everyone you need that when you definitely do not. My 800 horsepower Supra doesn't have a drag pack. And it hooks just fine on the 18-inch wheel. So I have no idea what lies these people are spewing. Anyways, yeah. I hate people that do that. Finally, and I think this one will surprise a lot of people because this is one thing that most YouTubers swear by doing first. And I do too, but there's a stipulation. Wheels and tires. Don't buy wheels and tires based off of how your car currently sits. Like, let's take a look at my roommate's IS300. It's got pretty fat wheels and pretty fat tires on it. Uh, it's not stock, but it's stock ride height. If I were to buy another set of wheels and tires to fit this ride height and then go to lower it, it's not going to fit well. I would not recommend doing that first. At least without some knowledge. If you have some knowledge, if you're looking up how other people's cars will sit after being lowered or after their ride height's been changed, then go for it. But a lot of people, and I'll see this even on like trucks and stuff like that, they will get wheels and tires on their stock stuff, on their stock suspension, and it'll just look goofy. They'll either have way too big of wheels and tires on their trucks and, and Jeeps, or they'll have way too small, and it just looks so goofy when they go to lift their vehicle and stuff or lower it. Same with sports cars. If you go ahead and get wheels and tires that fit the stock spec and then go to lower it, it's probably not gonna look how you want it to look. Either the camber's gonna be way off, it's not gonna be as flush, it's gonna be poked out. It's just, I recommend lowering your car first and then getting something that fits around that. I do think wheels and tires is one of the best modifications for your car, but just do it after you do some research. Don't blindly go to the wheel and tire shop on your way out of the dealership. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't want people to think that I hate any of those mods. A lot of those mods are great mods, except for chopping your muffler off. I think we had one just drive by right now. Um, a lot of those mods are great mods. However, sometimes there's just better mods that you can do first. I personally think one of the best mods you can do for your car right out of the gates is a nice exhaust and a tune. If you want to tie in an intake with that, go for it. A lot of modern day intakes are really flowy and, and just built really well right out of the gates. But yeah, the mods I listed here are great mods. However, if done incorrectly, they can be nightmares. So don't do that. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Hopefully we all learned something here. I don't know everything, so go ahead and comment down below some mods that you don't recommend doing first. Let me know your opinion on the ones I said. Anyways, hopefully you did enjoy this. If you did, subscribe, hit that like button, and until next video, peace.